Welcome back to Unit 1, Part B, where we're looking at the challenges and the opportunities presented by the Sustainable Development Goals for business practice in the 21st century. When I say the 21st century, we haven't really been too far into that journey yet, but I want to share with you a diagram that helps me appreciate the context for what is possible. And it's around something that we call the waves of innovation diagram. In this diagram, we can see that we have been on a journey quite rapidly and with increasing frequency over the last 200 years in taking on new technology and new innovations to achieve the kinds of lifestyles that we currently enjoy. But you can see inside this diagram that there, there are some issues with the journey that we've had. Whether it be the first wave with iron and water power, through the second with railroads, third with electricity, fourth with petrochemicals, and then the fifth with digital, tech, digital networks, perhaps you can see that the, these are colored in brown. And that's intentional because these previous waves of innovation, we realize now that they have all had impact on our natural systems and actually also on our social systems around our planet. So the legacy of these waves of innovation has been both positive and negative. The sixth wave of innovation provides us with a significant opportunity to address the impacts that we've had from our previous waves. We have an opportunity in the sixth wave to look back and remediate or clean up pollutants, as well as looking forward to remove pollutants and uh, negative impacts from our business herein. So it's a nice diagram to get the context of where we're at and how our businesses will operate in this sixth wave will really determine the quality of life that we will have ourselves, for our children, and for their grandchildren. Which goes as far as to influence the United Nations and the Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has a very nice quote where he points out that the 17 Sustainable Development Goals are our shared vision of humanity and a social contract between the world's leaders and the people. And so it's with this in mind that we now think about the challenges and the opportunities that we're presented with when we think about sustainable business practice and the SDGs. So we'll run through several now. The first one relates to country capacity to be able to deal with those 17 goals and their component targets. So you might well think, depending on where you are listening to this MOOC, that your particular country has varying capacity for adopting the goals. Perhaps your taxation structures uh, do or don't allow it. Perhaps there's a legislative context that enables or prevents you from doing the kinds of activities that you would like to around innovative waste management, for example, food waste composting, uh, perhaps it's batteries and recycling, perhaps it's removing waste uh, in the form of white goods from landfill. Alliances and agreements, like the social contracts we have on returning our uh, e-waste or electronic waste at the end of its life, are very important to have uh, enabled at a country level. And leadership is critical in this aspect for our decision makers to set uh, logical pathways for industry to be able to gear up or ratchet up their behaviour towards sustainable development practices. Another is addressing the conflicting goals and benefits that we might find when we look into the goals uh, and how we enact them in our businesses. So it is a real challenge, but I also think an opportunity to find the multiple benefits of what we might be going to do inside our own business uh, in this context. For example, if we're going to be looking at recycling uh, or composting food waste, finding benefit opportunities for the local council in uh, their commitment to community goals, commitment to beautifying their local environments is a way of that multiple benefit um, reciprocation becoming real. 
There is a need to remove disincentives. So perhaps there are taxes or fees on uh, landfill that are actually encouraging people to dispose at landfill rather than recycling. Perhaps the price of electricity or the price of recycled goods and services are not encouraging people in that particular country to engage in those activities. On the flip side, the opportunity to create incentives for them to do so uh, is there as well, whether it be uh, the opportunity to get small amounts of money for delivering recycled plastics to a, a receptacle centre or aluminium cans, for example. Aligning stakeholders around common vision is critical to realising these multiple benefits, as it often involves stakeholders spanning federal or national governments, regional authorities and local authorities, as well as business and the community. Another challenge relates to the cost of implementation, although when we say cost, often there are significant benefits as well, but enabling decision makers to see the cost benefit of doing what you're proposing is super important. The Economist estimates the 17 goals would cost around two to three trillion per year over the next 15 years. And yet we don't see much of a similar argument around the supreme benefits of being able to achieve those goals. And indeed, the cost of not doing uh, those goals is also substantial. So the language around costs and benefits of implementation is very significant to consider in your own business practice so that your decision makers understand the benefits and the costs of what you're proposing. This might be from Capital Works all the way through to operational and maintenance funding for your products and or your services. Integration is a challenge and also an opportunity a cross-sector approach is needed rather than isolated behaviours uh, by a particular company or organisation. So having communities of practice amongst your industry colleagues or your sector colleagues is absolutely critical. And this might not just be locally in your country, it might be an international alliance, for example. Public, private and international bodies working in cooperation, and indeed cooperation is important, according to the needs of each country. The last one that we are highlighting here in the introduction MOOC is around being able to evaluate your progress. And while there's often funding for setting up programs and setting up initiatives, sometimes funding for evaluating progress is missed. It is a key item to address at the level of your business if you are beginning an initiative to make sure that you know how you're progressing. Indeed, this is very important to be able to continue with funding applications. And it's also important in terms of your business bottom line to make sure that you can see that you're making progress financially, as well as benefiting the environment and your local community. And many nations are working on how to institutionalize these goals and create indicators for how to measure progress at a national level. These could be used at the level of industry and business so it's a good one to keep an eye out for. The appropriate metrics, data and indicators definitely need to be developed to gauge progress to meet the 2030 timeframe. So we've had a look through the opportunities for implementing the SDGs and considered some of the challenges in doing so. As you read the materials, you'll see a lot of reference to national challenges, institutional challenges, and I encourage you to think about what they might be for the business and what opportunities the businesses can take in light of those challenges. There are some key resources that you can engage with to help you uh, in this unit, and that is in part A and also in part B. So the UN SDGs link is here for you. And there is also a piece on the overall context uh, that you can uh, view. The People's Report Card is an example of a global effort to monitor our progress in achieving the UN SDGs. The London International Development Centre Report is another example of evaluating progress. And the Tool Compendium developed by the Asian Development Bank provides a wealth of information about various frameworks, tools, and metrics that you can use on your journey in integrating the SDGs into business practice. I would like to acknowledge my lead author of the user content for this unit, Mr. Avinish Gokul, 
and also the uh, support of Griffith University, Commonwealth Open Learning and the Open University of Mauritius. Thank you for your time.